Live on Thursday, October 30th, 2014. I am Dave Biddle, and I'm joined by Alex Gleitman. Alex, I asked Urban Meyer last night after practice if any other Ohio State players are facing suspensions or disciplinary action, and he said no. This is obviously good news, but it does fly in the face of what we've been hearing all week. What is your reaction? Yeah, it's a little surprising, but I, I guess when you think about it, it's, it's all that not surprising. Uh, you know, I, you, we've certainly heard rumors. We've, we chose to hold back names, um, you know, out of respect for those guys just in case, A, they were false, or B, Ohio State wanted to handle things internally and, you know, didn't want names coming out for whatever reasons. Um, but, you know, and, and I'm still kind of tending to think that the situation, um, that some of the names we are hearing are true in, in terms of getting in a little bit of trouble, a violation of team rules and whatnot. But it looks like, you know, if th- that is the case, Ohio State and Urban Meyer are going to handle things internally. They don't want to make a public case of it. It's probably, uh, uh, you know, first offense, maybe second offense at most. Um, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if on Saturday we see some guys that, uh, you know, potentially – uh, we're used to seeing play, maybe not play, and that's how they kind of handle a, a one-game suspension or something of that sort. Or, uh, you know, maybe it's maybe it's something that it's not suspension-worthy, and, you know, they just decide to uh, give them a little extra time with Mickey Marotti. So uh, a little surprised at first when I first heard that uh, that when you asked Meyer, he said there was no one else uh, in the hopper uh, in terms of getting in trouble. But at the end of the day, it kind of makes sense that they want to handle things internally. Uh, you know, this, you know, the rumors of of drug tests and whatnot, you know, it wasn't an NCAA test like the Noah Spence um, situation, so that would have been obviously public. So if it was a drug test and if there were other players who potentially failed besides, or allegedly I should say failed besides Rod Smith, um, you know, then I think it's going to be handled internally. We also had a chance to chat with JT Barrett last night after practice. Uh, it's always a pleasure. It feels like I'm talking to someone who's older than me, even though he's about half my age. Um, he has obviously uh, suffered a similar injury to the one Braxton Miller suffered early last year, sprained MCL. Uh, but Braxton's was more serious, caused him to miss two games. Alex, a lot of fans have said they think Cardale Jones should start this week against Illinois. But Barrett has been medically cleared, and I think the staff wants to keep him sharp for the Michigan State game the following week. Uh, I'm sure Cardale Jones is going to play a lot if the Buckeyes get you know, a sizable lead. But uh, I think the staff's making the right call by starting JT Barrett in this game. I'm sure they're not going to run him very much if possible. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I would agree with you, Dave. I think they absolutely need to start JT. I think, if nothing else, it's more of a confidence booster coming off that Penn State game where he struggled in a hostile environment. They want to get him back in rhythm, get him back, you know, having success throwing the football because they're going to need him to do that against Michigan State. And on top of that, you know, as you said, his knee might limit him in terms of the run game. So, you know, if if they can build an offensive game plan around limiting Barrett's runs, um, Obviously, he was he was capable in crunch time, uh, in double overtime, and and a regular overtime in the Penn State game. So if he has to run, he will. But I think they're going to try to develop some sort of game plan where Barrett can stay in the pocket. They still have a run game, but they're able to get a pass game going because they're gonna they're going to need to do that against Michigan State if the game goes as Ohio State plans. They're 28 and a half point favorites as of this morning. Um, you know, this game potentially could be out of hand at halftime, and at that point, you know. I, I don't think it's a bad idea to play Cardale Jones the entire second half if you have a size of lead and your defense is playing well. Yeah, as you mentioned, the Buckeyes are favored by 28.5 points this Saturday against visiting Illinois. That's where the spread opened up at. It opened up at 28.5, and, and it's holding steady. Could be some nasty conditions this Saturday here in Columbus. High of 45, low of 28, with a 40% chance of rain. That could get pretty nasty, so hopefully the Buckeyes can take care of business and then get on out of Dodge, get some backups in there. Switching gears to recruiting, Alex, um, give the latest on Matthew Burrell. I think I, I get a lot of questions about Matthew Burrell, where he's going to end up. Give your take on Matthew Burrell, and also let the listeners know anything else that's notable on the recruiting front. Yeah, well, let's start with the facts. You know, Matthew Burrell just took his fourth official visit to Penn State this past weekend. It was an extremely uh, – it went extremely well. Uh, for him, I think better than most expected. Uh, James Franklin really did a good job, especially with his father. They they really hit it off. Um, and coming off that visit, Burrell announced the top three of Ohio State, Penn State, and Tennessee. And and Adam McLean, who's a who's another recruit from the DMV area, committed to Penn State, kind of came out and said, you know. Penn State is the school Matt Burrell's going to. Nobody else has a chance. I think that quote, um, you know, coupled with uh, Penn State replacing Florida State and Matt Burrell's top three, uh, have kind of led to a lot of pessimism around 
uh, Ohio State fans in, in terms of where he's going to end up. But I would say not so fast. I think Penn State is an absolute real contender, and I, you know, I admit it on the front row. I actually probably jumped the gun on Sunday, I think, when I came out, and I asked the source about the situation about him. They still thought it was Ohio State and Florida State, and, and I talked to that same source a couple days later, and he said, nope, uh, Penn State has definitely surged ahead of Florida State, but I wouldn't go as far as to say they've surged ahead of Ohio State at this point. I think the Franklin relationship with the family is real. I think it's close to home. Penn State has traditionally done well in the DMV area, probably thanks to Larry Johnson mostly, but also proximity. Um, obviously, that whiteout environment on Saturday night was great, and it kind of showed you know, the promise of that program heading into the future. They're not quite there yet, but they certainly have the ability um, you know, to, to do well, and they, they need help on the offensive line. Uh, that being said, though, Urban Meyer, I was told, has done the best job in recruiting that, and that's important to him. Um, the three schools that he has the, at the top of his list, uh, he has the best relationship with those head coaches, and, and, and Meyer is his closest relationship there. Then you have Larry Johnson, who's done an outstanding job with him on the recruiting trail. Um, he recruits the area now for Ohio State, and those two are very close. And then finally, you have Zach Smith, who used to recruit the DMV last year for Ohio State before Johnson came on, and he is very close with the Burrell family. Um, so you have three guys who, who Ohio State is has in there really close with Burrell. Ed Warner has done a good job in, you know, in building a relationship there. And, you know, Burrell's been to Ohio State three times in, I don't know, what it, whatever it is, since, since April, the last six months. Um, he's comfortable with the school. Uh, he's very close with Justin Hillier, Jay Sean Cornell, some of those guys. So a lot of things uh, Ohio State has going for them, Penn State has going for them as well. But I think the one thing to look at is Ohio State – a lot has changed. Florida, Florida State, Penn State, Tennessee, LSU, Alabama, all these schools have been mentioned by Burrell and have circled in and out of his top group, but the one school that's been the constant has been Ohio State. So for me, my crystal ball remains on the Buckeyes until I'm told um, otherwise, uh, but, but this thing could end you know, potentially uh, in the next few weeks. And anything else on the recruiting front you want to pass along, Alex? Uh, yeah, you know, just big weekend coming up, night game against Illinois, chance for some recruits from out of town uh, to come in. You have Joshua Norwood, a cornerback from Valdosta, Georgia, coming into town. You have Rashad Roundtree, a cornerback, or a, sorry, a safety from Lakeside, Georgia, coming into town. And you have Brandon Bowen, an offensive lineman from Utah, coming into town. Bowen is definitely one to watch. He's on, he is currently committed to Utah, but he's on flip watch. Um, I know his trainer played for Urban Meyer at Utah. Urban's still a little bit of a legend down there. So Ohio State was kind of always an offer he wanted. He actually got it the day, I think. He committed to Utah or the day after. So this is the only trip he has booked, and a lot of people inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center feel confident that they could flip him. Uh, Roundtree is deciding on November 7th, so this is good timing for an official visit. I would say right now it's probably – Roundtree keeps saying it's between two schools at 60-40. I think right now George is the 60, Ohio State the 40, but there's a chance now late in the game. He's giving them a chance to come in and surge ahead. And finally, Norwood was committed to Cincinnati uh, since the spring, but he's had an outstanding senior season. Uh, a lot of schools have liked what they've seen of him on film. Ohio State offered a few weeks back. They expect a lot of SEC schools to come in now that the Buckeyes are in and, and, and take a second look and offer him. So it's good that they're getting him, up, getting him on campus uh, for a visit while the iron's hot. And uh, Norwood actually decommitted from Cincinnati. He told Bill Curlick that this past weekend uh, and told me on Monday or Tuesday that the commitment to Ohio State is certainly possible if they're willing to accept it. So those are definitely things to look for this weekend, a uh, big recruiting weekend against the Illini. Great stuff out of Ali G, my man Alex Gleitman. Thank you very much, and thank you to all the listeners out there. Take it away, best damn band in the land. Bye.